So if you already know which CPU you want, next up is the CPU cooler. As a creator or gamer, in fact, whoever and whatever you're doing with your PC, how do you know which is the right cooler for you? How do you know which CPU cooler is enough for your CPU? And should you be going with air cooling or AIOs? What's the difference? Which is the right one for you? So in this video, I'm going to explain which is the right one for you, help you and give you some of the tips how to choose a cooler, as well as sharing some of my best recommendations that I think as a creator, you should go for. So first, the big divisive question, air coolers or AIOs, all in one liquid coolers, which one is better? If we're looking at extreme workloads and short term, then AIOs have a little bit of an edge when it comes to like the cooling performance. But the truth is, if someone just says AIOs are so much better, they're so much better in cooling performance. The truth is, if you take this high end air cooler, like this Noctua NHD 15 Pro Max and like the best cooler of liquid coolers, which is this one over here, liquid freezer two 420 millimeter, like the best AIO you can buy then basically this one will perform better in like short and higher workloads, but they're not that different. We're not talking about like massive difference, like twice as good. It's a little bit better, but there's other things to consider. One of the main thing as a creator you should be looking for or thinking about is the long lastingness of the coolers. Not a lot of AIOs give you like a good warranty. Like Arctic gives you very good warranty, long warranty. So they're very confident with their products. But usually the air coolers will give you longer warranty period, which actually tells us a very clear picture, which is that air coolers are actually much more bulletproof and they don't like, there's not, they, they can't go wrong. Nothing can go wrong really with the air coolers whereas on the AIOs if the pump inside the AIO breaks you don't really know this you can't see it because it's inside there but what happens is obviously your CPU temps are rapid high they're so high this might not be as long lasting because it is a little bit of a fragile thing inside there now don't get me wrong the AIOs have come a long way and they're very good these days not all of them but some of them are very good. But as a creator, I think if you're doing a lot of long renders and you want your PC to be like stable, you don't want to think about it. You don't want to like worry about, oh, is my pump still working? What it's going to be like? Then sticking with an air cooler is a great idea. In fact, a better idea than an AIO. Now to give you an example, all the SI's system integrators who make like big workstation, whether it's Threadripper, AMD, Intel, Xeon, any workstation, you don't see any Lenovo, HP, whoever makes those, you don't see any of them. None of them come with an AIO. And there's a reason for that because just having an air cooler inside your PC is just, it's a solid option. It's just gonna run you like 10 years time, exactly the same. Like nothing really goes wrong with there. Whereas AIOs can be a little bit finicky. Finicky? Fiddly. So practically, I think if you just want a workstation as a creator, you probably should be really looking at air coolers and which one are the best for that. Now there's one more thing to consider and that is the looks. Now not all people care about looks, but not all people like the look of air coolers and not all people like the look of liquid coolers or air, you know AIOs. So there is the difference that like an air cooler will take a massive amount of space inside the center of a PC, whereas this one is like maybe makes it look a bit nicer, but you know it's opinions there depends which one you like more but the underlying thing over here is that AIOs high-end AIOs are a little bit better than the air coolers but the air coolers are more bulletproof sometimes even quieter than the AIOs so there's just something to think about next big question when choosing the cooler is how do I know which cooler is enough for my CPU. Now, one of the main specs that you should be looking for when choosing a cooler for your CPU is the TDP rating of your cooler and as well as your CPU. Now, not all coolers, like not all AIOs give you like the TDP rating, but every single CPU will have a TDP rating. So for example, a Ryzen 5 is a 65 watt TDP processor and when we go to Ryzen 9 it's 105 watt TDP and the Intel processors like some of the i5s, i7s, i9s either 65 watts or 125 watt TDP rated. Now Intel and AMD ratings bear in mind aren't exactly the same so the same thing doesn't mean the same as on the other one so when you look at like 105 watt TDP and 125 watt TDP they're actually not the same because the companies just measure them a little bit differently 
but this is still the only spec on a CPU that actually gives away how hot it will run. And now the golden rules when it comes to choosing the cooler. First of all, Intel runs hotter than AMD, at least in the last few years. So if you come from the ninth generation onwards, those processes compared to Ryzen processes, Intel runs much hotter. Second of all, the stock coolers really suck. So if your cooler comes with a stock cooler, it is no good for longer renders. If you're doing anything longer than like half an hour long, you know, like Blender or something like that, or video exporting, photo exporting, those coolers just are gonna like take it so hot. Your CPU is gonna run in the 90s or something like that, especially when you're in a hot environment. So they're no good. Apart from the AMD Wraith Prism cooler that comes with some of the 3000 series Ryzen processors. And another golden rule when choosing a cooler is to think about your workflow. Now, if you are a gamer and you're, you know, doing just gaming, then CPU is not so intensive when it comes to gaming. But if you're a creator and you're exporting or rendering stuff out all the time, video export, Blender render, 3D render, photo export, then your CPU is probably most of the time 100% utilized, maxed out, pushed as much power through as possible. And the cooler your CPU will run, the better and faster it will, you know, complete the task. So if you know that maybe you're not doing that much rendering or exporting of photos, you know, maybe sometimes, but most of the time maybe you're editing on photos or you're doing light threaded workflows, maybe Photoshop, doing something like that, then having a beefy cooler isn't gonna make you that big of a difference, whereas on the other cases, it will. Now said that, always having a better cooler will give you a better performance in a way because running your components, your CPU, the main component in your PC cooler will give you some benefits. First of all, quieter system. Second of all, longer lasting. The cooler your components run, the longer they last. So that's always better. Now more in specific, which coolers would kind of fit which CPUs and which ones I would recommend. Now bear in mind, this isn't like a very scientific test for things. These are just my golden rules that I've always chosen the coolest for and they have never let me down. Now there are some exemptions and things like that but if you go with these golden rules you're gonna make a good choice, your system's gonna run cool and you're not gonna leave any performance on the table. So there's three categories of CPUs that we want to really focus on. First of all the lowest is 65 watt CPUs on the desktop and lower. So that includes the Ryzen 7s, not all of them, some of them are 105 watts. And on the Intel side, it is i5s and lower. Now said that not all i5s are 65 watt TDP, some of them are higher. For those CPUs, which AIOs I would recommend? I would recommend having 240 millimeter or higher AIO. We're not gonna go into 120 millimeter AIO because I think they're really waste of time, especially when it comes to creators. When we come to air cooler, pretty much any air cooler that you're gonna get is gonna run your 65 watt chip very cool and very nice. Unless you're Intel, then I would recommend you go with at least six heat pipe air cooler. So in the air cooler, there's like these pipes that run to there. They're called heat pipes. The more they have, basically the more capacity of cooling there is very generally. Other ways, there's a lot of different variances as well that play a role in cooling this. But this is like one good way of seeing which air cooler is better. Next jump of CPUs is the 105 watt TDP plus CPUs. So on the Ryzen system, it's some of the Ryzen 7s and Ryzen 9s. On the Intel side, it's some of the i5s, i7s and i9s. So when it comes to the AIO size, I recommend at least 360 millimeter AIOs on those processes. When it comes to air cooling, make sure that it's quite high end air cooler and it has at least six heat pipes or the cooler TDP rating is at least 200 plus watts. Now we're gonna give you examples in a moment, but that's like the golden rules how to choose them. And then third of all, there is another section of CPUs that are the AMD Threadrippers and the Intel CM processors. And those run 270 watt TDP plus on Intel side and 280 watt TDP plus on the AMD side. And that's like another level of heat that we're producing. And when you go in with these, there is only like specific coolers that are made for those sockets, especially for these heat loads. We're gonna talk about that in a moment, but I would go no with no AIOs when it comes to that because there's no AIOs that have been made for that 
high CPUs, just because the CPU actual IHS integrated heat spreader on the CPU is just so large. Usually those AIOs are much smaller, so they're not going to perform as well when it comes to that. So then Lowry, which coolest do you recommend? Now I do want to say that I haven't tested every single cooler in the world, but what I have tested and what I recommend are good solid coolers and I know you're going to get awesome performance on there. So I know going with these, you're going to make a good choice. Now the lower end bracket of the CPUs or the lowest, you know, TDP rating, what I can definitely recommend you is go with Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240mm AIOs or 280mm AIOs for those and you're going to get an awesome performance. Now Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 coolers are like the best in the class for the price point. They are fantastic coolers. So the other option what I really like and what I've been impressed with is the Deep Cool Castle EX coolers. They've been very quiet, very solid performers in terms of just like putting out the heat and in my practice and what I've seen. I also want to mention this Be Quiet Pure Loop 240 millimeter AIO because it's a little bit different. The pump is located in a different place so this cooler can actually be mounted on the bottom of the PC rather than on top of the PC that or on the front of the PC like usual coolers can. So this is different, it's very quiet, very awesome cooler as well, so I definitely recommend those. If you want to check them out, I'm going to leave the links in the description below so you can find those there. In terms of the air coolers and when we move to this side, what I recommend you check out is Hardware Canucks made an awesome budget air cooler guide and like tested a lot of them. So if you want to pick any of those up or check that video out to get more in detail about lots of different graphs and coolers and things like that, you can go check that out. But if you're not so techy, it can be a little bit confusing over there. What I can recommend is this Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim 2 cooler. Now it is rated 130 watts TDP, but I'd still put it on the lower end of the bunch because it, when it comes to higher end processors, it, it just produces a bit more hit. But this is a fantastic performer for your Ryzen 5s, some of the Ryzen 7s and some of the Intel processors. Definitely worth checking out. I was super happy with that. Now another cooler make that you can always trust is a Noctua cooler make. Noctua makes fantastic coolers. They might be a little bit on the pricier side, but they have a very long warranty they offer you like a lifetime support of some of the like future sockets so those like coolers will be kind of for you for a lifetime some of my favorites are the noctua nhu 12s redux now as well which is a little bit of a cheaper version then there's noctua nhu 12s Chromax black if you want to just have a black cooler and then I also want to mention that the Arctic makes an awesome cooler air cooler budget air cooler which is the Arctic 34 eSports and then the duo is also you know the same version of a cooler that comes with two bands in there fantastic budget coolers and they're going to cool all of those processes fine so if you go with any of those you're going to make a great choice your system's going to run very nice and cool now when we move to the higher end of CPUs the 105 watt TDP and onwards here's what I would recommend Arctic liquid freezer 360 millimeter is going to be an awesome cooler like best in the class when it comes to liquid coolers AIOs and if your case supports this 420 millimeter AIO now in fact this 420 millimeter AIO is better than the 361 and cheaper but not all cases support 420 millimeter radiator. So make sure that your case supports this if you want to go with this. But it's a big chungus and it's the best, as best as you can get. And it's very, very affordable. Just go check out the prices below and you're going to be amazed. Other than that, I do still recommend the Castle EX coolers from Deep Cool. Make sure that your cooler or the AIO size is at least 360 millimeters. On the air cooler side now, we're going to have to go with some of the high end air coolers. So which ones are they? First of all, Noctua NHD 15 Chromax Black or the brown version if you don't care about the colors. Both of these are like absolutely fantastic big air coolers. I've been running mine like 24-7 for the last few years and it still cools absolutely fantastically. Another one is NHU 14S which is actually the weakest of the bunch of air coolers that I'm going to recommend but not in all cases you need that high of a cooler. So if you're running some of the Ryzen systems they run a little bit cooler so you can actually go with this this Nocto cooler as well. Very solid cooler and you can put a second fan on the back of it and then you're going to get a bit more
more extra cool performance if you want to keep like your air cooler a little bit smaller than these big two tower coolers then from be quiet there's also another two coolers that i recommend that i've used and i know are good and they are called the dark rock tf2 which is like a bit different design of a cooler but it's very quiet and it's rated up to 230 watt tdp another be quiet cooler is the dark rock pro 4 that i used on my orange and black pc build feel free to check out that video but both of those coolers are very good. And last of all, the very high end of Threadripper, when it comes to there, I would recommend really only one cooler really to go for. And that is the Noctua NHU14S TR4 SB3 cooler. So basically that's the Noctua cooler that's designed for those big massive chungus of CPUs. And that's gonna be most likely the best in its class you're not going to go wrong when going with that and if you do a little bit of research you see that a lot of system integrators use those noctua coolers when they want to cool down their like massive workstations and the last thing you need to know when it comes to cooling your cpu is the compatibility now make sure that your coolers are compatible with your case motherboard and sometimes even your cpu make sure that the cooler has support for the socket of the cpu that you're about to cool second of all make sure that your cooler fits inside your case make sure that the height of the air cooler actually fits in the case and it's not going to hit your glass panel or the side panel and you can actually close the panel or make sure that the aio actually fits inside the case the case has support for x amount of millimeters of the radiator and last of all when you're going with air cooler in fact if you're going with aio as well what i recommend you to do is make sure that your case has a lot of airflow now there's some beautiful cases out there but not all of them have a good airflow so make sure that there's a good airflow going through your case because the more cool air you can push into your case the cooler your components run everything that i mentioned over here all the coolers are linked below if you want to make a purchase feel free to do that they're all linked down there and the last question i have for you is which is your favorite cooler let me know in the comment section below likes if you enjoyed this video subs if you'd like to see more and i'll see you in the next one thanks guys for watching bye bye